In this tutorial, I give you an overview of Autodesk Recap, from getting started to how it can be used with Revit and even how to share point clouds with clients. Stick around to find out more. Welcome to Power Search, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content. To launch Recap in a project, Find your recap thumbnail and double click to open. Recap has now launched and my recap model is now visible. It is now time to process this model for use in Revit downstream. The first step in the process is to remove noise that is basically clusters of dots that I don't need. The best place to start is to orient to a view where the noise can be easily selected. While in this view, I can also point out the need to fix the model origin, as highlighted by this grid, but I'll get to that later in the video, so make sure you keep watching. To remove noise, select from the contextual tools in the toolbar down here. Starting with the window tool, this allows me to select all the dots within a rectangular selection. Click once to commence, and then click a second time to end. Once the selection is complete, the highlighted dots change to a lighter tone. From there, move back down to the contextual menu and choose the bin icon to delete the selection. Repeat the process as required. Another useful tool for selection is the Fence tool. This allows you to select around irregular clusters. Click to define each corner of the selection. I can keep clicking to add additional corners to my selection as desired. Once I am satisfied with the selection, I can simply hit enter to finish the selection and then move down to the delete button and delete the selected points. Some points may be harder to see because they blend into the background from the display menu and then the lighting settings, find edge highlighting to darken the model. And then move across to change the background color and select something contrasting. Points are now easier to find, select and delete. Next, we can redefine the origin of the model, which can be done from the display settings. From there, move across to the points button and then down to the update origin button. In this case, I am looking downstream to when this recap model will be imported into Revit and I would like to prepare the import coordinates. Focusing on the instructions down here, I first need to click the new origin point. I am content with the z-axis, so I can switch immediately to the x-axis by pressing shift on the keyboard. Now I have to click a point in the model to redefine the x-axis coordinate. Once I am satisfied, I can hit enter to confirm and the coordinates will update. And now. As you can see, the grid is aligned to the model. Switching over to Revit, I will show you how this simplifies the insertion process. From the Insert tab, find the Point Cloud button. Path to where the recap file is saved, and then move down to Positioning and choose Origin, as in the origin of the recap file, to Internal Origin, which is the origin of the Revit model, and then click Open. And because the template I am using has the project base point aligned to the internal origin, the point cloud model is aligned to my Revit project base point, which makes operability a breeze. Next, I am going to create some regions. Regions help segment the model in recap to enhance system performance. 
At the moment, I can't see inside the model without zooming in. This can make selection hard. To simplify selection, I can use a limit box to slice through the model. As you can see, the limit box is slightly skewed in relation to the grid, but if I click reset, the box will be redefined. Now, I can use the view cube to reorient the view to something that is more conducive to clipping. I can select the top face of the limit box and this will change color to signify selection. I can now drag it down and it will start to clip the points that intersect with the box boundary. Once I am satisfied, I click confirm. To revert back to the original bounds of the limit box, click the reset button. Now I can zoom in and rotate and I can actually see most of the floor. The mirror balls are in the way which can be confusing, so it's best to turn these off at this stage. To do this, I go to the display settings and then move across to the eye and then down to mirror balls where I deselect. Now I can come across to the menu on the right and stretch this out so that it's readable. And now I can show you this entry called Regions. At the moment, this project doesn't contain any regions, but I can create one by clicking this plus symbol, and I will call this region Floor. Then from the contextual tabs, I will select Plane and define the tolerance. This is because the Plane Selection tool selects areas that are on the same plane. To make a selection, I need to click three points. And on the third point, double click. The selection includes all points on the same plane, and I can now add the selection to the created floor region as shown. These points are now green. Back on the right menu, I can toggle that region's visibility. I can then reset the limit box and I will keep working repeating this workflow and create regions for the ceiling. I hope you're enjoying the video and I'd really love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments how you use Recap. The good, the bad and the ugly. Thank you so much for watching. And then repeat again for the walls. Keep in mind that everything that you do here in Recap will also be accessible in Revit downstream. Stick around to see how that works. However, in this instance, I would like to add to my selection. I can do that by pressing Shift. If you find this video interesting, then be sure to check out my video on scanning in the field to modeling the office, where I use Cyclone Register and Field to process data collected on site. Now with all the regions off, I can use the selection tools to add the plinths. Furthermore, I use this to eliminate noise with greater precision. I can use the selection tools to even eliminate my silhouette from the model. This is a really precise way of eliminating noise clusters and will also improve the efficiency of the river model once the point cloud is inserted. I mentioned earlier that regions created in Recap are also useful in Revit. Switching to a Revit model, the point cloud has already been inserted. Type VG to open the visibility graphic overrides and notice that because this Revit model contains a point cloud, an additional tab is accessible. As I expand the visibility categories, notice a category called scanned regions. And if I expand that further, I can see all of the regions I had previously created in the recap model. And now I can colorize to help distinguish the different parts of the building.
and I can deselect these as required to improve usability and improve the model performance. Recap also enables the viewer to step into the scene of the scan locations and these images can be exported for sharing. To do this I find the scan locations on the right menu and then right click and then choose export image. It is also possible to export images from the real view scene. To demonstrate, I will rotate the scene and then move up to the home menu and then across to the export image icon. Once exporting is complete, I can click open folder to view the image. This can now be shared with clients and stakeholders. It is also possible to share the point cloud model with clients and project stakeholders. This is facilitated through Autodesk Drive, which is free if you contain a subscription to an existing Autodesk product. On a web browser, open Autodesk Drive, create a new folder and click save. Then, back in Recap, find the Publish button. This is an existing project, so in this example, I will now click New. Give the project a name and connect this to Autodesk Drive. This can also be connected to a BIM 360 account. To connect to the Autodesk Drive, you will need the Desktop Connector, which is a free download. With the desktop connector installed, ensure that all drives are refreshed to detect the project. Once the drive is synchronized, I can now see the drive icon on Windows Explorer and I can path to my project folder. From here, I can click Publish. Up here on the right hand corner, I can track publishing progress and once that process is complete, I am notified. Switching back to the browser and my drive account, the project can now be shared with clients and stakeholders. With sharing complete, let me show you what the receiver will see. This is an email with the project details and an invitation to view the project. The receiver would then log into their respective drive account and access the project and then find the RCP file and double click this to open. Drive will now open the model where the receiver can view all of the real scene photos and thus giving them unparalleled access to any site virtually. Drive comes with some great features, such as the ability to dimension and add comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you found that interesting and that you learned something new. Remember to like this video and I'll see you in the next tutorial.